Hi drummers and welcome to this video. Before I get started, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you for the 2 million plus views here on my YouTube channel. But today I've got some great content for you from the old vault, from the last video files on my phone. I actually recorded this a year ago and then I completely forgot about it until this morning. So this morning I was inspired to, you know, I was working away in the computer and I just had the inspiration to get my fiddle out. I have not had my fiddle out for about four or five years. And when I say have my fiddle out, I still don't consider myself a, a fiddler, right? I'm a wannabe fiddler, <laughs> right? But I got into a lot of trouble with, um, with my shoulder. I got a developed a frozen shoulder from being, uh, even though I'm a really relaxed drummer, I'm a very tense wannabe fiddler, right? I know some of you can relate to if you're too in your head and you're trying to, you know, think so fast. And when it's an instrument, it's not your first instrument, right? So even though my teacher would say, Mickey, relax, I'd be like, okay, and everything would go tight. And I got to the point where I couldn't lift this arm higher than this. I couldn't do this. I couldn't lift my arm up. I was like, this, it was like locked. It was very painful. Luckily, physiotherapy saved me. It was the best thing ever, but it, I kind of now was a bit gun shy of getting my fiddler, fiddle out. So um, it reminded me that that can happen for a lot of people with their drumming. I'm a very relaxed drummer, but a lot of people are just like me in the fiddle. They're very tense on the, on the drum. So um, I remembered that I made this, um, this recording on my phone with the intention of sharing with you. Uh, maybe I looked at it and thought, oh, I'll redo that. You know, my energy wasn't as high or, you know, the sound wasn't as good. And now I just realized that doesn't really matter. You know, I, if this can help, this will be messy and it's not going to be all super polished, but if it can help someone with their grip and not play with tension, then so be it. So I'm going to share this one from the vault. It's actually 11 different types of grips that you can use for, uh, for your bar and tipper to avoid playing with tension. So I hope this really serves you. Remember to click the thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to the channel. I know 15 and a half thousand of you already have, but if you haven't, please subscribe. And also don't forget to click that bell notification to make sure you don't miss a future video. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this. One of the questions that I get asked a lot is, how can I prevent the tipper from sliding in my hand? And this is actually quite a common problem, especially among newer players. So in this very short to the point video, I'm gonna share with you some helpful tips, 11 different types of grips, including what I currently personally use for grip, uh, some household items that you probably already have in your home that could help and some other options as well. Now, the issue of the sliding tipper is not just a problem of inconvenience where you have to then reposition your grip after playing for a little while. It's actually quite important to not uh, hold the tipper too tightly. And so the, our natural reaction when the tipper starts sliding is to want to grip it tighter. And so you'll get this death grip and all that tension will just go up your hand and up your arm and up your shoulder. And tension is not a good thing for musicians. I recently heard a quote, I think it was somewhere on a comment on YouTube, I, I can't remember who said it, but it said, tension is the enemy of motion. And I really like that, it just stuck with me. So I want you to keep that in mind that as musicians, we don't wanna play with tension. It also comes across in the playing. It sounds, it changes the way that we play and you tend to scrape the tipper along the drum head rather than getting a good natural rebound. So grip suggestion number one is a simple drumstick wrap that you can get at any music store or online. It's for made for wrapping drum kit sticks or pipe band drumming sticks. And I have one uh, from Promark, just stick wrap. It's R-A-A-P, or sorry, R-A-P-P. Um, I've also used ones by Head. Uh, but you know, they all do a very similar thing. You can get them in different colors and patterns. Right, I'm not going to spend too much time on each one. I'm just going to show them to you. You can, there's lots of videos on. Oh, what I would say is read the instructions because it's simple enough to put on, but there is, um, yeah, I didn't read the instructions first time I did this. <laughs> so I had to redo it. Grip option number two is the simple rubber band. Now, uh, this was the very first grip that I would have to have wrapped around my tipper in order to give it any kind of a grip so it wouldn't go flying out of my hand. But you can use it for whether you're a, a Dublin style player, you can kind of get your finger to catch that rubber grip. It will not move up there. If you, it's a simple, simple solution here. Or if you're a single and playing, you're holding it further up, 
it has a nice little grip to it as well. Uh, one of my platinum members left on our site one time in big bold caps, the rubber band saved my life. <laughs> and so um, sometimes simple is the simplest. Okay, next up, I've got my wee list here, so I'm just gonna double check here. Oh, the gel, the gel pen. This is just a simple little rubbery grips that you get uh, usually in a pack of five for putting around your pens or pencils. Um, they're best suited for like a thinner type of tipper. It's, you, you won't get this on a, an older style thicker tipper. Um, they're a little bit tricky to get on. Once you get them on, you can kind of roll them on or you can use something like your castration pliers because who doesn't have these in their cupboard? <laughs> so it kind of opens it up like that and you can get it on. Uh, so that brings me to suggestion number four, which are O-rings or castration rings. Not my personal choice, but they work well and some people prefer them. So that's what that's used for getting a tiny little ring uh, on a really big tipper. And so that kind of serves a similar purpose as the rubber band. The number five grip is sex wax. Now get your mind out of the gutter. This is an actual product used for surfboarders uh, for their, their grip on their boards. And, but it works really well for drumsticks. One of my students at the Gala College had this um, when you're in it worked really well. You just rub it on your, on your stick. Number six is Gorilla Snot. I, I, it just sounds gross to say that. I would want to have that in my drum toolkit. Some of you might think it's just a good conversation piece. It just works the same as the sex wax. It's a nice sticky kind of, uh, kind of pasty or wrap that you're, I don't, I've, I've never used this, but that, I've heard that it works. So if it works, who cares, right? If you happen to have it. Next up, we have animal kind of veterinarian wrap tape. Um, and I bring this up because some people will have this in their cupboards if you're, uh, you have horses and things like that or wrap it around animals' legs. And it's actually like just self-adhesive and you wrap it around and it just like sticks to itself. It does get a bit bobbly after playing for a while, but I mean, it's, it's one of these things that works in a pinch, okay? Grip number eight is tennis racket grip. Now, th this has been on for quite a while, so it's a little bit manky looking, but um, you can get tennis racket grip tape or friction tape, um, but try to get the thinner stuff. They're, some of the more padded grips are a little bit too thick for my personal taste. That works really well. Um, and if it doesn't come with like a finishing little bit that some of the drumstick, uh, the drumstick ones come with like a little finishing strip so that when you finish it, you can just have another little piece that covers the edge. Just use some colorful, or plain black electrical tape to kind of finish off your tipper. Grip number nine is actually one that I really like. It just doesn't look very professional, <laughs> but it's blue tack. And everyone has this in their house, I'm sure. Um, and you can take this out. What I like about this is that you can really mold it and put as much or as little on as you want. And you kind of rip it and uh, you can kind of, you know, work it and build it up. And what I like the most about it is that it's really sticky and you can really, relax your grip like and and um that's probably what i like the best about it it's, it's really nice and sticky and it's almost like if i even let go it's like sticking to my hand so um yeah it doesn't look pretty but it will really help you decide if you if the grip makes a big difference for you so yeah blue tech the tenth grip is one that i haven't personally tried yet but i really want to and it's shrink wrap tubing that you can get whether it's online or a craft or hardware store uh, just if anyone has tried it i would love for you to leave a comment down below as to what size you used i know it comes in like 20 millimeters or different kind of diameters um so drummers we like to share with each other and we're good like that so if you've used this and you've had success for it, with it please leave a comment to uh, let us all know how you get on with that. And I've saved one of my favorite ones for the end. And so number 11 is a leather or some kind of rope, kind of traditional kind of wrapping around the stick. This has been wrapped and rewrapped a few times, but this is, is much more old school, traditional looking. So I just like the idea of this, I guess. Um, this, this is actually a tipper that one of my platinum students gave to me. It's made of moose antler, and I'm not sure if you can see in the camera there, but it's eagles uh, are kind of carved into the into the ends there. I don't know if the lighting's picking that up or not. Um, but uh, this one I have is very sentimental meaning to me, so I really like the, the leather wrap on that. This just would look wrong if it was wrapped in some kind of black um, shrink wrap tubing or drumstick tape, so 
there you have it. Those are 11 different grips that you can try. You don't need all 11, you just need one if you're having trouble with uh, your sliding tipper. I really like the appearance of beautiful um, wood, you know, especially when you get coca bowl or ebony or snake wood, the beautiful grains of the wood, especially with a really highly finished tipper, they use sometimes things like friction polish to really bring in the grain. The only thing is that a perfectly and beautifully finished tipper is often very slippery. So as much as I, it feels like sacrilege to kind of cover up any of that wood, sometimes you do need to have a little bit of extra grip just where you're holding it. So I hope you found this video useful. And you know, I would love to hear if you've tried any of these tips and how you found them, what worked for you and what didn't work, and that's really helpful. So please leave a comment down below to let me know how you get on with that. Lastly, if you haven't already gotten my free report on the basic strokes and the troubleshooting uh, little lesson over at bornexpert.com, you can head over there now and sign up for my email updates where I share helpful tips that I only share via email. Well, that's it for now. I hope to see you in another video. Thank you very much for watching.